Welcome to Experiment 3 for Physics 101. The title of the experiment is Spring Constants for Springs in Series and in Parallel. Now, last week's experiment was investigating the spring constant for a spring, just one spring, and we were measuring the length and stuff to calculate our spring constants. In this case, our aim is to observe the behavior of springs connected in series and parallel. So obviously we expect the spring constants to be different because of the manner in which they are connected. Now, in parallel, the springs will be connected obviously side by side. So parallel means in this position. And in series, they will be attached to each other in a vertical manner this way. Now, what do we expect to see from the spring constant so? According to the theory, the springs that are connected parallel to each other are meant to have a double, so the spring constant will be doubled. And yet, when the springs are connected in series, the spring constant will be halved. So in today's experiment, we expect to see the difference, so either the doubling or the halving of the spring constant. In last week's experiment, we used uh, the length, the change of length to calculate our spring constant. But this time we are going to be using the period T. So we'll be using the harmonic motions um, of the springs and the masses to calculate K. Now, the equation that we'll be using, so this is the equation that you will state in your report. The equation we'll be using is T squared is equal to 4 pi squared n over K. Now this equation should look familiar to you because this equation was used in experiment 1 for simple pendulum where we were also calculating, we were using the period to calculate um, the gravity, force of gravity. So, T stands for period. How are we going to calculate period now? If you look at your table here, period is equal to time divided by number of oscillations. We're going to keep our number of oscillations constant at 15. So we will measure the number of oscillations which will be done by the bulk masses and we will use that to calculate our constant K. There are five different masses which we're going to be using today. Five different masses Right, but in the experiment, we were going to be using just three that are available to us. So 50, 100, 150, but yet in our table, we have one, two, three, four, five. So obviously, we'll be using connecting two together to get our 150 and 250 masses. In your uh, table section here, right, you calculate your T by dividing your time by number of oscillations. Then you're going to square these T values. So. Since you have five different, for the first um, table, five different t-squares, and again another five, so in total, ten different t-squares. So you're going to find ten different k's of constants, right? So you know your t-squared from your table, you know four, pi obviously a constant, so you know your masses which are given to you in kV, and then your constant k is what you're going to calculate. So, you are then going to, in your uh, results and discussion section, you are then going to compare. So, what is going to be the relationship between these two k's, that these five k's, and these? So, because they are written in series, printed in parallel, there should be a difference, and you are going to then explain that difference, and if there are any similarities or uh, disparities between the two, you will explain them in your results and discussion center, section. Sorry. Then the next, the last thing you will do, obviously, is your graphs. So you draw your graphs of t squared versus m uh, for series, for parallel, and for series. Now, let us look at how you're going to perform the experiment today. So, apparatus. You have your tool stand. You have your cork pad. You have the clamp. And then you have your two springs okay so these will be connected in parallel the next thing that you're going to list as your apparatus is this connector which you will use to connect 
the two springs together. So the connector will connect these two springs and your mask will be attached here. Then three different metallic masses. So one, two, three. On your table, there are five that are listed, but as your apparatus, you are only going to use three metallic bulk masses. The last apparatus you'll be using will be your phone. You will be using the stopwatch app, which is in your phone, to record the time which you'll be putting in your table. Now, let us start by the first uh, the first table, so it is for springs in parallel. So I have them here connected in parallel. I will then connect them with the connector. Then I will attach my masses. So this is the 50 gram. Open my stopwatch. Okay. How am I going to count my oscillations? Now, remember for the pendulum, it's going from side to side, and it was easy to see. For the springs, it will be a vertical motion. So it will be going up and down. So how will I see that my one oscillation is complete? So if I let go, it will bounce. Okay, it's bouncing. If I make it bounce a bit slower so that I can show you exactly how I'll be counting. So it will be one, two, three, four, five. So each up and down will be one oscillation and that's how I'm going to count my number of oscillations. So I will let it go and at the same time I will use my timer on my phone. So letting it down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, then I'll stop. That is 5 seconds and 32 seconds, okay? Then, let me connect a different mass. So this is a 50 grams, so I'm going to connect my 100 gram mass. And again, calculate my number of, um, my time, okay? So number of oscillations, gently pull it down while I start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Stop it and it will be at seven seconds. So that is how we will be viewing or rather recording our times and number of oscillations for spring in parallel. Let me connect the springs in series. Now they're connected in series. I don't need my connector anymore. And I will put my 50 gram mass again. So in your report, right, you will then continue to say, so for my parallel, I use 50 and 100, right? So you're going to continue and say, and the 150 was attached, the 200 gram mass was attached, the 250 gram was attached. Then we move on to doing it in series. So same thing that I'll be doing, okay? Get my timer ready and look at the motion. So count the number of oscillations. So I'll pull it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's press stop and record the time taken for the 15 oscillations. Then remove my 50 gram mass and attach my 100 gram mass, okay, which is a little bit long. Gently pull it down. Start my timer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and then I'll stop. Then my time will be recorded again. So I will continue for my 150, 200, and 250 masses. In your discussion section, you can also talk about the relationship between the masses and the time taken for number of oscillations. You will notice that there is a trend, either the mass increases and the time decreases, or the mass increases and the time also increases at the same time. So that will be something to discuss in your discussion section of the report.